guys and girls welcome back to watch the time thanks for tuning back in i really appreciate you coming back to see me and i'm really pleased about to bring you the, my first wish do it watch don't don't pay too much attention to the name i'm not gonna lie. i'm not really sure what to make of it it does sound a bit strange but their watches i'm pleased to report are cool looking pieces this is their gt chronograph um, they contacted me through my Instagram actually. They said they'd be happy to send one out. Would you be happy to feature it? And I thought, yeah, it looks like a cool looking piece. Um, please send it over. And here it is. Like I said, a few different color variations to choose from. The name, I'm not mad about, I'll be honest. I don't say too much on the intros, um, but it looks cool, cool enough. It looks like there's enough about it to be something that you should like and many people will like. But is that the case? Is it gonna fall to deceive? To deceive? Is it one that you should pick up? Hopefully, by the time we get to the end of this video, you can make an informed decision about that. But um, it's, it's making a lot of good noises at this point. But I'll stop going on. As I say, link in the description. It's not an affiliate link. Please feel free to use it, though. And with that being said, it's about the time to get the camera turned around and get on with it. Hi, guys. So this is the watch. As you'll see, it's the Wish Do It. I actually quite like that logo, to be honest with you. I think that's what I'd probably go for more than the name because that doesn't really bowl me over. Out of cardboard box, you open it up. It's got a sort of like a faux leather sort of box inside and uh, opens up nicely. Uh, put that to the side. Uh, nice clip button there. Open it up so it opens both sides. It comes with a cleaning cloth, which is quite nice. Emboss will wish to do it on there. Uh, in a sort of velvety material. It does come with a warranty card. I, I, I dare say yours would be sort of signed and stuff. So I, I'm pretty sure that would be the case, uh, but not mine. Or at least I hope yours will be given the price. So um, please let me know, guys, if you purchased one. If your one was signed, that would be good to know. But, um, yeah, let me just put all this to the side. I keep the cleaning cloth out just in case I need it. But um, there we go, guys. That's the watch. As I said, it's the Wish Do It. Uh, this is the GT Chronograph. This is the rose gold one. I went for saying a little bit more blingy. Not really normally in keeping with my taste, to be honest with you. It's not a bit of me. But I just thought I'd try saying different. Let's put this around there put it back in and start back up again there we go so yeah there's a few different color variations to choose from as well i'll bring them up now um just so you can have a look and see if there's something this morning keeping with your taste but um yeah these ones are not for the faint of heart they are quite sort of brash but i must say that's not been a bad thing i've had huge amounts of compliments on this watch probably disproportionate to any watch i've had in for a while to be perfectly honest with you guys so um yeah just give me a moment guys i'm just give it a quick wipe sorry Excuse me, guys and girls. Yeah, always the way, a little bit of fluff on the dial and stuff. But, um, yeah, lots of compliments. So there we go. Uh, inside, it's running a, a quartz uh, Seiko movement. It's a VD53. I'll bring some information up about that movement now. Um, I think it's the first one I've had in with this movement. And, actually, it's been running pretty well. Um, I do like a couple of features. of it. I like the fact it's got a date. Um, the chronograph's pretty seamless. I like the way it resets, which I'll go through when I show you the dial and stuff. But um, yeah, reliable movement, given the fact it's a Seiko movement, so you can't really go wrong. And like I say, my first sort of interaction with this movement, I believe I can't, I don't think I've ever had one in with this movement. Um, but yeah, decent. Normally you go for the sort of VKs of the world, so give some interaction with the VD53 was a nice touch. So there we go. So the construction of the watch, so the watch itself, aside from the strap and the crystal, uh, is all 316L stainless steel. You'll see you've got these sort of screws uh, that are silver. Everything else is rose gold. It's sort of plated, uh, but underneath it is stainless steel. Um, and you'll see this case back, which I'll show you in a moment. So yeah, all 316L stainless steel, all pretty much all brushed. You've got a fasted edge going down the side of the case. The screws are high polished, which is nice for a bit of contrast against the case. But um, there you are, all sort of rose gold 316L stainless steel, that coating on it. The case thickness of the watch, yeah, this is a thick boy, it's 15.3 millimeters. The case diameter, I measure it as shortest point, I was getting at 41.9 millimeters. And when you go from the nine to the three, including the crown, it's coming up 48 mil. So yeah, quite a bit of width, but that's a huge crown, isn't it? A little bit oversized, but there we are. The lug width on this can be very difficult to change out given the way it sort of integrates to the case, but it's 25 millimeters and the lug to lug tip to tip coming in at where the case is it does sort of sort of flare out a little bit it's coming in at 50.2 millimeters so not huge uh, i probably was expecting it to be a little bit bigger i think where it's a bit top heavy and it's quite thick it makes it feel a bit bigger but it does hug the wrist nicely given it's got some downturn from the case but um that's the proportions guys uh the bezel 
it's fixed it's sort of integrated from the case really but yeah the bezels there i do like the screws i think they're a nice accent against the brush rose gold i think it does make it stand out and makes it, it gives a little bit of pop um but yeah bezel crown situated at three o'clock just a push pull crown um and i don't know about, about you guys but that either looks like the rims of a car which is probably what it's supposed to look like but when i keep when i keep looking at it, it makes me think of like the rudder or what you what you have on a boat a little bit That's sort of yeah but yeah, I know it's supposed to probably look like rims on a car, but there you are. Um, case back, actually really, really nice. Gone with the theme for sort of GT, uh, deep engraved car. That looks really, really cool. I was very impressed with that, actually. That was a nice touch. The rubber strap is comfortable. Uh, the only thing that happens is you do get bits sort of sticking to the rubber because it's that sort of material where lint and stuff does stick to it. So do bear that in mind. Pin buckle clasp, again, signed. I do like that signage i think that would be the way to go on the dial instead of wish do it that i would definitely go for that logo because the name is not the best but yeah signed on the pin buckle clasp loads of holes for it to fit your wrist and you'll see how it fits me in a bit it has got some ventilation holes just to stop it your hand your wrist and getting too sweaty as well the crystal covering the dial is a mineral crystal uh, which is a little bit of a shame really i was expecting sapphire crystal because it's not an inexpensive watch you're looking at about 200 pound watch uh the movement isn't very expensive and stuff so i would have expected sapphire but what do you know it's mineral crystal um so there we are the water resistance is cited as being 50 meters so that'd give you five atmospheres of water resistance and the weight will appear in the top right um it's 147.3 grams guys which is a bit of a beast when you consider the rubber strap probably weighs about 10 15 grams if that so you're talking the rest of the watch is about 130 grams just for the head of the watch so yeah that's a big boy isn't it um and like i said you can tell because of the thickness that it probably was going to weigh a bit but there we are so that's that's the watch but let's have a look at the dial now guys in a bit more detail so you, you have got a rehout uh chapter ring of a minute track you've got indices at every hour uh you've got numerals inside that in rose gold and the hands are also in rose gold a uh, mixture of brushing and polishing on the hands. I do like the way the hands are done. I think they look really, really stunning, to be honest. The hands are done really nicely. Nice red accent from the tip of the second hand. And obviously the chronograph down there, which will start. Actually, I'll start up now so you can have a look. So you'll see the chronograph second going around. Now you've got a 24-hour subdial, and that's the minute subdial for the chronograph. You've got a yellow accent on that one, orange accent on there. Um, you've got the date, which is situated just out of reach there you'll probably bake out just under the minute hand it's in the ninth there uh, it's all loom filled so i'll bring the loom up now the loom on this was not bad guys to be honest i wasn't expecting a lot uh, i've had watches in like this before the loom has never really been very good but actually loom on this in all practicalities was much better than i expected it to be so that was a nice touch actually the loom uh, so there we are as i said rose gold accents against the sort of gray of the of the of the um, sort of skeletonized dial uh, you've got screws coming through and you've got the silver accents as well. Um, yeah, the, the indices are a silver on the outer outer part of, of the indices. So not rose gold like the hands. Um, yeah, the subdials are really nice sunburst. You can see how it plays with the light as you move it around. Uh, the chronograph you'd have seen, I pressed this one to start it. You'll see it will stop. Uh, if you press the one down at the four o'clock position, what happens is it will keep going round until that goes to the upright position. I did it before where I forgot it was on. It was over near the 40 position and it took ages to go back, but actually it was pretty cool. It looked like it was doing something. I'm not really seeing that often with the chronograph watches that I've had in. So that was a nice touch as well. But um, yeah, that's the dial guys, that's the loom. Uh, as I said, VD53 movement. If you take it out, it will hack. You put it back in, it will start back up again. You take it out to the first position, you can just scroll through the date as with most watches, put it back in and jobs are good. In. But that's the dial, guys. That's everything going on there. Let me just pop it on the wrist, give you an idea of what it looks like on my wrist. Okay, so guys, this is what it looks like on my wrist. As I say, it's not a small watch. It's one that you're going to know you're wearing. It's it's quite a big boy, isn't it? So, yeah, I can't lie and say it's, it's not understated. But if you're looking for a bit of a statement piece and you want one that's going to get compliments, I think I've got you covered, to be honest, because this is definitely going to be a bit of that. But what do you think, guys? Yeah, like yeah there we are okay so that will now take me on to what i think is pants and pucker about the watch 
If you've ever watched before, you know I always start with pants. I like to go on a high with pucker. So what I think is pants. Um, a few things I have to mention, and I'm going to start with the second hand alignment. You'll see now, it basically is just completely off. And with a quartz piece, that is a real bugbear of mine. I feel like that is something you need to try and get right. Uh, for a £200 quartz piece as well, I think that should be hitting every marker really. And in my experience, it's kind of been off more often than it's on. Uh, sometimes at the angle, it looks like it's, you know, it is hitting it, but it's not. Um, which is unfortunate, like I said. I think the alignment when you've got a quartz piece has got to be one of the biggest things they get right. So that's the first. The mineral crystal for the price, uh, given it's quite an inexpensive movement and stuff. I would like to have seen sapphire crystal, but I am a bit of a sapphire snob. So there we go. The rubber strap is comfortable. I'd rather use a slightly different material so you don't constantly have to keep taking sort of fluff and lint and stuff on it off it because that can be a pain. It's the same as on my deep blue Kanagawa Wave watch. I love wearing it, but that's the biggest pain of wearing it. And the name, Wish Do It. I have no clue what that means, to be honest. Um, it's a nice looking piece, but the name is just unfortunate. If you're going to persist with it, persist with the name, I would implore you to put the logo up at there because Wish Do It just is not not working really i don't think um they look to be doing some fantastic watches but the name is maybe something that needs to be looked at but that's just my opinion so they're the four things i go with the second hand alignment the mineral crystal rubber strap and name what i think is pucker uh quite a bit more because uh, it's, it's it's a, it's a cool piece so i'll go with the hands uh, like i said before i do like the hands in terms of the brushing through and polish at the edges i think it nice nice little bit of contrast it just makes it look like a nice bit of a bit of craftsmanship as well so the hands the loom as i say i wasn't expecting much with the loom for the type of watch it was but yeah it really surprised me the legibility i kid you not because of how they done it it's actually really easy to tell the time with a lot of skeleton watches that is the biggest bugbear with people wearing them so that was good to see the movement, like I say, it seems like a cool movement. I'm glad they've gone for a known entity and like a Seiko sort of chronograph movement. That was good to see. So yeah, the movement, the clasp, I think the clasp on this is really nice. I think it's a good size, um, nicely finished. Yeah, lot, lots to like about that. The case back for me is one of the best things about the watch. It was unfortunate you can't see it obviously when you're wearing it, but I do think that's a nice bit of detail on there. Um, so yeah, the case back. And it's eye-catching. I don't know how you would really quantify that generally. General look, I normally say, but it's eye-catching. Like I said, I've been wearing this at work and out and about for a couple of weeks. And I've had numerous, I've had more compliments on this watch than any watch I've had. So that tells you an awful lot, to be honest, guys. I think it's because it's so striking. People keep asking me where it's from and I keep pointing them. So I'm hopefully it's led to some sales for Wish Do It. I'm sure it has. But um, yeah, eye-catching is what I'll end with. So just to summarize what I think is, pucker as I go with the hands, loom, legibility, movement, clasp, case back, and the fact it's eye-catching. And guys and girls, would I recommend this watch? I would. I think if you're looking for a statement piece, obviously it's not an original design. I'm not saying it is. But I do think if you're looking for a statement piece with the aesthetic of a really a much more expensive watch, then I do think Wish Do It have you covered. They've got multiple other watches to choose from. This is the first one I featured. Hopefully, I will feature more in the future. But guys and girls, please let me know what you think about this watch, more importantly. And maybe any other watches you may want to see on the channel. And as always say, don't forget to like, subscribe. And always watch the time. Take care, guys. All the very best.